have access to our lands through treaty. Stephen Harper breached it, then the end's got a problem with uh, Harper, not us. So we're going to find out. Uh, they're going to find out who lives on whose good graces. Just one of many rail lines blocked by the I Don't Know More campaign back in January. You remember when that happened. Some, some of those rail blockades were subject to court orders, which police were slow to enact. But now, as Joe Warmington revealed in his column this morning, it's the police who are saying that the Crown prosecutors aren't acting. Joe Warmington joins us now to talk more about this. And Joe, back in uh, January, I ripped apart Chris Lewis for yeah. not acting on court orders, and, and I called for him to resign and, and run for public office if he didn't want to, to follow the law. But you've talked to him, and you found out that he tried to press charges against uh, people in Napanee, Ontario, and uh, the prosecutor said no. Phil is in. Well, first of all, you didn't get it wrong when you did it. You called him out, which he deserved to be called out for. He knows that. But the thing that he did say to you, and he did it through... Uh, the, the social media talking to his officers with a video is that they were still investigating and that was the excuse and it turns out that when I checked back with them that they were investigating and that they have and I don't know the exact figure Brian but it's up around six people that they would like to charge down there and they're ready to do it and they have the evidence to do it and All right. lo and behold the crown attorney says no it's not in the public Here, here's a quote from your, uh, your columnist in the morning in uh, Sun Media Papers where you broke the news from Chris Lewis. He said, a thorough investigation was conducted by our criminal investigators. They felt strongly that grounds to charge a number of key protesters criminally existed, particularly given that this blockade was more than a brief inconvenience to a few people. But it's the AG's office that the Crown prosecutors, which answer to the Attorney General of the province, said... No, and this is the one that gets me. Uh, I want to read this and then you tell me what's going on here. This is a spokesman for Attorney General John Garrison who said, it was determined that taking into account all the circumstances, there was no longer a public interest in pursuing a prosecution. What the heck does that mean? Well, I, I think, you know, my own opinion is it means that there's uh, two sets of uh, rules here. The justice is two-tiered one for Aboriginals and one for non-Aboriginals and uh, non-First Nations people. If we had been down there, the circumstances would be different. We'd be charged. The people that are locals, that are from Tyndinaga, that's the third time that they've blocked that rail line, by the way. That's a set of circumstances that can't be ignored either. Yeah. And so, you know, the reality is, though, when you handcuff your top cop in your province, one has to go. Either he has to go. As you said before, I didn't agree with that at the time. And now I think it's the Attorney General or the Premier that has to go. There's nothing more important than the rule of law. We've well, if there's, if there's no rule of law, then it becomes the rule of men. And people decide like this. They, they don't treat everyone the same. And they say, well, the law applies to Joe, but it doesn't apply to Brian. And that's not fair. That's not fair to anyone involved. No, and it's not legal either. So, you know what, again, this story, thanks to Sun News Network, is getting some play. But I noticed that really no one else is covering it because everyone's afraid of the issue. And the thing is that Brian and Westover, where they had the Enbridge uh, pipeline, Swamp Line 9 crowd, there's 13 of them charged. And there's some, I think it's basically non-native, but I think that there's some native protesters involved in that as well. So obviously the public interest is different there. What we need is a clarification from the minister, the attorney general, uh, Gerritsen, to tell us exactly what is going on here. If not, it, it, you know what, should Joe? resign. Uh, you said earlier there's uh, once, you know, the law applies in one way to uh, natives and one way to non-natives. And we're, you and I will both get emails uh, after the show's over saying, yeah, well, that's the way it's always been and it used to be bad for us. But two wrongs don't make a right. I'll admit that things used to be really bad in terms of how the law was applied. But I don't think it's been that way in a long time. It shouldn't be that way if it is. Let's fix it. Let's not make matters worse by saying we're going to let you break the law and not enforce it anymore. And then we're going to do, uh, enforce it on everybody else uh, to follow in the days and years ahead. So, you know, if I go out and get a ticket now from the OPP, why is that fair? Well, it's not in anybody's interest. It's not in the public interest. So this is a yeah, very well, serious thing to play with. To them. Just mail it back to them. Don't pay it and say it's not in the public interest for me to pay this. Go to hell. Uh, and, you know, see how far that gets you. I don't think it will. I'll sign uh, Brian Lilly on that. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, be my guest. Jim Feeney, the, uh, the, the director of uh, government and public affairs for CN, 
has come up with a statement on this. He says CN is very disappointed that the Crown elected not to prosecute while recognizing that a crime has been committed. It is unclear to CN what public interest is served by not upholding the rule of law. I think that puts it brilliantly, and, uh, and I really have to question uh, what we're doing in this country now. Chuck. Well, CN and, and Feeney understand that they've had uh, millions of dollars of uh, you know, goods held up. It's the third time that I know of at this very same spot at Tyndanaga, Marysville. And they know there'll be more ahead because there's no uh, incentive or deterrent uh, for there not to be another one. They just, you know, they, they get a free pass. They can block the country's rail lines there right. and there's nothing that'll happen to them. Let, let's sum up in the last minute we, we've got left, Joe. We've got a government that, um, led by Kathleen Wynne, following in Dalton McGinty's footsteps, that has uh, applies the law differently based on your race. Everything from Caledonia, which, what, started in 2006, it's an armed occupation still going on to this latest move. Uh, they uh, spent hundreds of millions of dollars on gas plants to move them just so they could save seats. As you pointed out, you've got an education minister that won't do her own homework, so why should the kids do them, with Liz Sandel saying she doesn't read curriculum. You've got the controversial curriculum coming in. You've got all these different scandals going on. And still, I think they're going to win some of these by-elections. People really, if you're in Ontario, I think people really need to wake up and say, we're not going to reward this kind of behavior anymore. Well, you're looking for a one-tier system, Brian? I mean, you know, <laughs> that's, I guess you're looking for common sense. You're going to have to stop that. Yeah, well, we'll have to uh, look for common sense another day on the show. Thanks, Joe. We'll chat later. Thank you. All right. Drop by Facebook.com. Share your thoughts. We got Joe's column posted up on Lily's pad. We'll put the link up on Facebook as well. We'll spread it around on social media. Share it with your friends.